hi guys i'm back again today with another video and today we're checking out top 10 biggest mega projects in europe so before we start don't forget to subscribe click the bell button and let's begin let's see from the largest Maybe offshore wind of farm the world has ever seen to a deeply controversial canal that threatens the political stability in the black sea these are the top 10 mega projects in europe this video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. We start off with number 10, the Stad Ship Tunnel, $272 million. Over in the rocky coasts of Norway lies a patch of sea feared by many sailors. Considered as the convergence of the North Sea and the Norwegian Sea, the Stadhavet Sea is one of the busiest maritime routes in the country. Historically, this area has been known to be one of the most dangerous waters along the coast with unpredictable winds and weather conditions. It has been documented by historians that even the Vikings would choose to drag their boats across land instead of sailing through these waters. To make traversing this area safer, the Norwegian Coastal Administration drafted plans to create what would become the world's first full-size ship tunnel. The Stad Ship Tunnel would completely bypass the dangerous Stadhavet Sea and cut right through the Stad Peninsula, oh, wow. reducing travel times by up to two hours. It will be able to accommodate as many as 120 ships a day. Once completed, the Stad Ship Tunnel will be the first of its kind in the world, allowing for the passage of full-size oil tankers and cruise ships. In 2021, the project got approval from the Norwegian government with a budget of more than 272 million US dollars. Construction on the Stad Ship Tunnel is expected to begin sometime in 2024 and is estimated to be completed by 2026. Number 9. Frankfurt International Airport Expansion Project – $5.7 billion Frankfurt International Airport is by far Germany's largest and busiest airport, serving wow, as many wow. as 70 million passengers each year. As well as being the busiest passenger airport in the country, Frankfurt International is also Europe's busiest cargo hub, handling more than 2 million tons of shipments just last year alone. Because of its importance as a major European transport hub and the ever-growing number of passengers each year, a $5.7 billion expansion project was initiated back in 2005 to improve the airport's facilities and increase the airport's passenger and cargo capacity. One of these projects was the expansion of the airport's oldest terminal that extended the structure's length by 800 meters, allowing for a total of seven new wide-body aircraft stands. This expansion alone increased the airport's capacity by more than 6 million passengers each year when it was completed in 2012. Another project that drastically changed the airport's layout was the creation of a new 2.8-kilometer runway in 2011 that ran from west to east. With this new runway, simultaneous landings were now possible, which significantly increased the amount of aircrafts the airport could handle. Finally, in 2015, construction on a brand new third terminal in a plot of land south of the runways began. The area used to be the site of a U.S. airbase, but was reclaimed by the airport when the base closed down in 2005. The new Terminal 3 is expected to increase the airport's capacity by as much as 19 million passengers annually and cost more than $1.1 billion to construct. Because of the delays brought by the COVID-19 pandemic, the new terminal is now expected to open sometime in 2026. Number 8. Istanbul Canal – 10 to 15 billion dollars Situated at the crossroads the? between Europe and Asia, the city of Istanbul in Turkey is located at one of the most strategic locations in the world. The city itself is built on either side of the critical Bosphorus Strait that connects the Black Sea to the Mediterranean and to the rest of the world's oceans. This natural waterway on its own sees more ships pass through it compared to the Panama and Suez canals combined. However, despite being completely within Turkish borders, Turkey actually doesn't benefit from the strait financially. This is because of an international treaty that Turkey signed called the Montreux Convention that regulates its use. The agreement ensured Turkey's neutrality during World War II by heavily restricting the access of warships in the strait, and it also guaranteed free access to all civilian vessels. As one of the world's busiest shipping routes, the strait is oftentimes congested to the point wherein ships usually have to wait days just to pass through it. 
To minimize the shipping traffic, the Turkish government is planning to construct the Istanbul Canal, an artificial waterway that would cut right through the European side of Istanbul, effectively turning it into an island. The new canal would be 45 kilometers long and is estimated to cost the Turkish government as much as $15 billion. It began construction in 2021 and is expected to take seven years to complete. This new waterway would completely bypass the Bosphorus, and some experts even argue the Montreux Convention itself. With this, Turkish allies such as the United States could in theory be given access to the Black Sea and send warships just outside of Russia's borders. Turkey would also be able to charge vessels that pass through it, hoping for the project to pay for itself over the next few years. Number 7. Hornsea 3 and 4, $19.2 billion. As you probably already noticed, we're using an amazing 3D size comparison animation for this video. Our partners from To The Top helped us with this. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to their channel. But now we continue with Hornsea 3 and 4. When it comes to offshore wind power, the United Kingdom is the second largest producer in the world, only behind China. In fact, four out of the five largest offshore wind farms in the entire world are all located within the country. Most notable of the four are the Hornsey Project's one and two wind farms, which are both the second and first largest in the world, respectively. Hornsey one and two are both located in the North Sea, 80 kilometers east, off the English coast. Together, these two wind farms generate a total of 2.7 gigawatts of power, enough to serve as many as 3 million UK homes. The wind farm will also take up an area of 870 square kilometers, which is roughly half the area of the city of London. However, despite the immense scale of the country's offshore wind farms, amounting to as much as 14 gigawatts of total generation, they are still a long way from their goal of reaching a combined capacity of 50 gigawatts by 2030. Because of this, newer and bigger offshore wind farms are currently being planned to be built in the country. Hornsey 3 is one of these wind farms currently under construction and is expected to be finished by 2027. The project is planned to be built east of Hornsey 1, over an area of 700 square kilometers. Once complete, Hornsey 3 is expected to generate 2.8 gigawatts of power through 230 individual wind turbines, even more power than Hornsey 1 and 2 combined. Finally, Hornsey 4 is currently in its planning stage and will cover an area of 600 square kilometers northwest of Hornsey 1. The project is expected to start construction in 2023 and aims to be operational by the year 2027. Number 6. Energy Islands of Denmark – $30 billion Continuing with the topic of offshore wind farms, Denmark is no stranger when it comes to this technology. The world's first ever offshore wind farm was actually built in the country way back in 1991 and served as a catalyst for the further development of the technology. Today, wind power accounts for almost half of Denmark's energy production, the highest percentage in the world. As part of their goal to further develop its sources of clean and renewable energy, the Danish government is planning to undergo the largest construction project in the entire country's history. By 2030, Denmark aims to build the world's first ever energy islands, which will connect massive offshore wind farms to Denmark and neighboring countries. Denmark's energy islands will consist of two large-scale offshore wind farms located in the North and Baltic Seas. An artificial island will be created in the North Sea section to act as a central hub for the area and once completed would have a capacity of up to 10 gigawatts, enough to serve 10 million European households. The island of Bornholm in the Baltic will serve as the second hub and have a capacity of 3 gigawatts. Once completed, the energy islands would increase Denmark's wind energy capacity by as much as sevenfold. Construction on the project is expected to begin as early as 2024. Number 5. European Route E39 – $30.6 billion Because of Norway's coastal geography being extremely rocky, mountainous, and separated by thousands of tiny islands, it has always been difficult to navigate. The European Route E39 tries to solve this very problem by providing oh, an easy-to-traverse path along something. the Norwegian coast. But even oh. with the E39 in place, the 1,300-kilometer-long route still does not solve the problem of creating a continuous path along the entire Norwegian coast. This is because the E39, despite being designated as a single highway, is actually composed of many different sections across vast stretches of water. 
Driving through the entire route would require travelers to board seven different ferry connections and would take at least an entire day. However, this is all about to change as the Norwegian government is planning to cut the 20 plus hours of travel time in half. They plan to achieve this by completely eliminating all the required ferry connections. This will be done through a series of tunnels and bridges that would bypass the water crossings along the route, essentially creating a continuous path. One vital part of this upgrade to the E39 is the Rogfast subsea tunnel, which would connect the city of Stavanger and Boken in Norway under a 15 kilometer oh, stretch of water. If completed, the tunnel would become the world's longest and deepest the road tunnel, with a length of 27 kilometers and a depth of plan? almost 400 meters below the surface. Work on the tunnel began back in 2018, and it is currently expected to open in 2033. The project also calls for the creation of four individual floating highways that would carry the E39 across some of Norway's what? largest and most breathtaking fjords. One of these planned bridges would go over the Bjornafjorden and span a total of five kilometers above the water. Once completed, this floating bridge would become the longest in the world, more than doubling the current record. Number four, Grand Paris plan. Express, $38 billion. The Paris Metro is one of the busiest metro systems in the entire world, seeing as much as four million passengers each day. Being one of the most visited cities in the world, Paris suffers from the worst traffic congestion in Europe. To combat this worsening problem, it has been a top priority for the city government to build infrastructure that would facilitate the millions of commuters that pass through Paris every day. One major project that is aimed to combat Paris worsening traffic is the Grand Paris Express, the largest transport project in the city which aims to further increase the reach and connectivity of the Paris Metro. The project calls for the creation of four entirely new lines and the extension of two existing ones. In total, the Grand Paris Express is expected to create 200 kilometers of new tracks, along with 68 new stations capable of serving an additional 2 million passengers daily. Construction of the new lines began back in 2015 and is currently being constructed in phases up to the year 2030. Before we get to the top three biggest mega projects in Europe, we want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. With Squarespace, you can create your own view. They're fully custom, it's super easy, and you can easily connect using the blogging, their website analytics tool, our content. Ready to launch? Go to squarespace.com slash top luxury to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, let's continue with number three, Hinkley Point C Nuclear Power Station, $47 billion. Nuclear power plants are notoriously known to be very expensive to build and extremely costly to decommission. However, if managed properly, their benefits can far outweigh their initial costs. So when the Hinkley Point C Nuclear Power Station in the United Kingdom was first proposed in 2010, it was met with mixed opinions from the British people. But with substantial financial backing from both French and British energy companies, everything was looking quite well for the new plant. Hinkley Point C is part of a new generation of nuclear power plants that are meant to replace the country's old, costly, and inefficient plants. The project was initially slated to complete in the early 2020s and have a total capacity of 3.2 gigawatts, enough to supply 7% of the entire country's energy needs. However, the construction was unfortunately met with multiple delays that pushed its completion date by eight years and saw its cost balloon to more than double eight the initial years. estimates. For one, what? one of Hinkley Point C's financial backers withdrew from the project back in 2013 amidst rising construction costs caused by the 2011 Fukushima disaster. The COVID-19 pandemic further exacerbated the already delayed project with supply chain complications and cutting down on people working on the site. Today, the project is still under construction and is now estimated to cost as much as $47 billion, more than twice its initial price tag, with the completion date being pushed back to as far as 2028. I thought I was Number like two, initial, high so speed two, $132 billion. When the high speed train the connection Lisa between London and the Channel heading. Tunnel opened in 2007, it was met with huge success. Constructed on time and under budget, High Speed 1 managed to significantly reduce the travel time between London and Paris. Because of its unprecedented success, the British government looked to create a second high-speed line that would connect the British capital to major city centers to its north. 
So in 2009, the Department for Transportation started to draw up plans for a second high-speed train line, which would aptly be called High Speed 2. High Speed 2's construction will be done in two phases, one going from London to Birmingham and another from Birmingham to Manchester and the East Midlands Parkway. As of 2020, the estimated budget for the entire project is known to go for as much as $132 billion and will become the biggest transport investment program in the country in over a century. Construction work on the new high-speed line started back in 2020 with the creation of viaducts and tunnels that would carry the line over and under different terrain. The project is estimated to be completed sometime in the early 2030s. Oh, is... Number one, Trans-European yeah. Transport thing... Network, $625 billion. The European Union yeah, is known for its vast and interconnected yeah, web money. of roads, railways, and airports that make it extremely easy for people to go in and out of different countries. In fact, 27 European countries are all part of what is called the Schengen Area. Mm -hmm. Travel between countries within this area is okay, largely free of border visa, controls and functions as a single course. jurisdiction, all covered what, under what, a single country? visa policy. As part of an effort to further connect European nations and make travel easier, the EU drafted plans to create what is essentially an all-encompassing transport network across the entire continent. Oh, the Trans-European Transport Network is a long-term project that will consist of roads, railways, airports, seaports, seaports. and telecommunications infrastructure that would solidify All the EU one. as a single interconnected entity. The entire project will be divided into nine different sections called Core Network Corridors that would cover all major population centers across Europe. The entire project is estimated to cost as much as $625 billion it's and is envisioned to be completed by for, 2050. Uh, One notable part of this ambitious vision is the Fiemann Belt Tunnel, which will connect the German island of Fiemann to Lolland in Denmark. Oh. The project started back in 2021, and once completed in 2029, it would become the world's longest road and rail tunnel. This vital piece of infrastructure would drastically reduce the travel time between the Danish capital of Copenhagen to the German city of Hamburg and the rest of continental Europe. Another interesting part of the project is the Mont Cenis base tunnel, which will cross the Alps and connect Italy and France through high-speed rail. It's meant to bring together both countries' rail networks for easier trade and travel. At a length of 58 kilometers, <laughs> the Mont Cenis Base Tunnel is set to become the world's longest rail tunnel once it's completed sometime in 2030. Well, if Which of these alive, projects are you the most excited to see? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to of see more about one. similar projects, you should watch our video about the, the top windmills. 10 mega projects in the USA. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Like, my brain cannot even come up with a one-liner, like, rhyme scheme. Yet alone, there are human beings that are creating this beautiful, efficient ways of, like, communication, travel, infrastructure, and, uh, like, environmental something, something. And, you know? That is something to look forward to. I'm actually very excited. Europe is like 20 years ahead of everyone uh, right now. In terms of like this mega projects, I believe so. Unless there's other continents out there that are doing it large and I didn't know about it. But I think uh, so far Europe is super, super ahead when it comes to like big projects like this. Um, it will be something to, like, see the outcome. Most of them are going to be done in, like, eight years to 15 years. Um, if God permits, we will be seeing them in person or via our youtube if youtube is still there right <laughs> but anyways uh let me know if you want me to check out any other stuff thank you guys for joining i'll see you tomorrow bye